The Kodiak Archipelago is a group of islands in Alaska. It includes one of the more popular islands, Kodiak Island, which is situated in the Gulf of Alaska where rugged wilderness and military service have coexisted for decades. The area is home to one of the largest species of bear, the Kodiak bear. A large male Kodiak bear can stand 5 feet high at the shoulder, and on hind legs it can reach up to 10 feet tall. Kodiak itself has more brown bears per square mile than virtually anywhere. One of the reasons the bears thrive here is they have plenty of space and high quality food. The three main islands making up the Kodiak archipelago are Kodiak, Avignac, and Shuyuk, in an area spanning about 5,000 square miles. In that same area there are about 3,000 bears and about 14,000 humans, both of whom prefer to not share the same living space. It's possible that you may happen upon a Kodiak brown bear while on a hike, or while visiting a salmon stream around the town of Kodiak. But there's also specifically designed areas which are better and safer for both the humans and the bears. They might have a reputation for being aggressive, but Kodiak bears specifically have lived alongside humans on their islands for a long time, with nearly no bear attacks. Just nearby to the island is Katmai National Park, where one of the most documented bear attacks took place the death of the grizzly man Timothy Treadwell and his girlfriend, where they were both killed after Timothy had spent years in close contact with these bears and ultimately ran out his luck. But solely on the Kodiak archipelago, it's almost unheard of to be attacked by a bear. That is, until the year 2021, when a hunting trip went wrong quickly. Senior Airman Brady Penn was ecstatic when he got a call from his father Steve, who had just won a hunting lottery for Alaskan residents, awarding him a permit to hunt elk on Afignac Island off the south coast of Alaska. Afignac, like the rest of the Kodiak archipelago, boasts some of the best hunting and fishing in North America, including salmon runs, Roosevelt elk, and the Kodiak bear. Over the next few months, he and Steve geared up for the trip, both mentally and physically. It's no simple weekend getaway, it's a windswept island cut off from the rest of the world by turbulent weather and the cold waters of the northern Pacific Ocean. They prepared as much as possible, physically trained for the grueling hikes, practiced shooting on the range, and discussed contingency plans with more experienced hunters. On the week of October 14, 2021, the big day finally arrived, and the two were waiting for the float plane that would take them to the hunting ground. Once Brady and his father were dropped off, they were on their own. The wind grew stronger as Brady and Steve settled in for the night. Freezing wind and light rain continued into the next morning, to the point where the hunters decided they had enough waiting around. So the two went out. They walked up difficult terrain covered in thorny bushes and branches, and finally made it to the saddle of a mountain ridge, and found a game trail leading into the valley below. The hunters followed that trail through each step, leading them further away from camp, and deeper into thick brush that shrunk their view of their surroundings. But despite the brush, Brady suddenly spotted something about a quarter mile away, almost invisible against the browns and greens of the forest. It was a large elk herd. They approached the herd as quietly as they could but lost track of them through the alder trees and tall grass. And when they had nearly given up, they stumbled to the top of a bluff and found themselves nearly face to face with a huge bull elk, which they then took the shot. It shattered the silence of the remote island. They had great luck by managing to kill an elk on only the second day on the island. However, the difficult part was about to begin with many hours of trekking to and from camp with heavy backpacks full of elk. The airmen began cutting up the meat and packing it back to camp, but they could carry only so much in one trip. The rest they put in a bright white game bag hung from a tree so that they hoped scavengers wouldn't get to it. The next day on October 14th, they returned to grab the rest of the elk, but as they entered the valley and headed down towards the patch of alders where they had left the remains of the elk, something seemed off. The bright white game bag was missing. They figured it may have been the wind that knocked it off, and that it drifted a few hundred feet away. They walked closer to the remains of the elk that they hadn't put in the bag, and Brady put a round in the chamber of his rifle. He and his father talked loudly to make sure any wildlife nearby kept their distance. Fifty yards from the dead elk, the hunters waded into a small meadow, where Brady felt relieved to be walking comfortably in the tall grass. But it all stopped with the cracking of branches and a low growl. 
a Kodiak bear appeared out of the corner of Brady's eye. Just ten yards away, its ears were back, its head was low, and it was charging through the trees. Brady didn't even have time to fire his rifle. The bear struck him and its paw pressed his back as Brady lay helpless in the grass. Then, suddenly the weight lifted from his back as the bear moved to attack Steve. He heard grunting as Steve struggled with the bear, but it disarmed him easily and started to attack him. In that moment, Brady was filled with adrenaline and struggled to pick up his rifle, but he was able to hold it steady for a few seconds and fired at the bear, which struck it in its hip. It ran off back into the cover where they could hear it crashing through trees and growling. Steve had a few puncture wounds in his hands from the bear's teeth, but his heavy Teflon gloves had taken the brunt of it. The two walked back to the saddle of the mountain ridge, where they used a satellite phone to call for an early trip back. But the wind was too strong for a flight, so the earliest pickup would not be for another 24 hours. With nothing else to do, the two hunters returned to their tent to sleep, where they were picked up the next day. That's the story and account of Brady Penn's memory of this event. It's truly a scary occurrence, and it's always unexpected. Bears treat gunshots like dinner bells, and especially dead animals that have been around for a few hours, they will certainly attract a bear. It's incredible preparedness on the pen side, but a horrifying memory that they will both hold on to and share for the rest of their lives. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.